Okay, so let's look at the um, key concepts and let's address it in revision mode. So what is language? It's a system of words, images, and sounds in our communication, right? That's really, really easy. What's sometimes not so easy is understanding what language is in an essay. So obviously language is words, right? Language is also, if you're someone that's um, watching a film, like The Castle, some of you may have studied The Castle this term, um, language wouldn't just be the dialogue, right? It would also be the, uh, the film techniques. Okay, that's also a part of language. So language is quite complex and it also has both micro techniques and macro techniques. Hopefully that sounds a little bit familiar, but just in case it doesn't, and we'll touch on this more, but just in case it doesn't, micro techniques are our literary devices, macro techniques are our form. Okay, micro are only appear once they're only on one particular page or one particular line so if there was she was as fast as a tiger you can see how that's just on page 12 of this novel only appeared once just there that's a micro technique right it's our literary devices only appears once macro techniques appear all throughout your text okay that's form things like setting setting happens all throughout the text it's not just in one particular line on one particular paragraph on this page it's all throughout costuming if it's a film um because costuming usually spans across many scenes characterization the way your character develops throughout your text um that is also form right because development isn't just again on one line it's all throughout the text um, the type of structure that your text uses. So if you're someone that's studying a play and if there's many acts to the play. Okay, um, but moving on, identity is our sense of self and understanding of who we are. And then culture is our ways of life that contribute to our identity, okay? Obviously, when we amalgamate many identities together, we start to form a culture, but when we spread out those individual differences between people in a culture, we start to look at identities. Okay, other key concepts that we need to be addressing. The idea of a perspective, which is different to perception. So perspective um, are the views that are manipulated and expressed within a text. However, perception is the interpretations that are gained outside of a text. Okay, I see these words kind of used synonymously in a lot of essays. They're not the same. A perspective is a worldview. Okay, whereas a perception is the way individual things are viewed um, based off worldviews, but other like biases. Um, and then self perception is how we view and understand ourselves. Okay, so people can share in perspectives, it's harder for people to share in perceptions because perception is really individual. It's linked to your worldview, but it's also linked to your individual experiences, your individual values and morals, and yeah, who you are as a person, your identity. Okay, the idea of individual and collective. Um, this should also ring a bell from the human experiences, right? Individual and collective identities. So when we define it, it's yeah, referring to the people and groups represented in the text. Okay, the individuals and the collectives, the identities and the cultures. Beliefs and assumptions refer to views that we accept as truth and often without proof. Okay, and empathy is the ability to understand and share in the feelings of others. Okay, understand them. Um, yeah, that's the biggest thing for empathy. So this is what's being used, language is being used to comment on this identity and culture. This is what's also being shown, um, different perspectives of people. That's being shown to challenge our perception of these cultures or these identities or ourselves. And then um, this is also being shown to us, individual and collective. And then this is what's being challenged again, the beliefs and assumptions about particular uh, identities and cultures, and also we're gaining empathy, okay? Please do not confuse empathy with sympathy. Um, we do feel sorry for some of the characters that you've looked at, but what's more important is empathy. We understand them because you can sympathize um, for someone, but not understand them. Um, the, the bigger thing is actually understanding someone. And just because you understand someone doesn't mean you actually sympathize um, for them. 
Okay. Audience impact. This is something that I've included because without a doubt, this is something that like I'm going to say most essays that I mark, I have to give feedback on. Audience impact is the most important thing that they want you to build up to. I'm going to be super annoying and go back here. Notice how language has a power to both reflect and shape individual identity and collective identity. Okay, cool. We're told that. In this module, students consider how their responses, right, to written blah, 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 can shape their self-perception. They also consider the impact texts have on shaping a sense of identity for individuals and or communities. Through their responding and composing, students deepen their understanding of how language can be used to blah, 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 blah. See how there's one sentence on representation? How, what, what your text is doing, how it's using language to reflect and shape individual identity, sorry, individual and collective identity. That's one sentence. The rest of this is about audience effect. What that representation of certain uh, identities and cultures, what, what is that actually doing to you? What, how is that actually changing your worldview, you, the assumptions and beliefs that you have, um, your empathy for others, your own self-perception? That's what we want to build up to. Okay, as you can see, this is the importance of knowing the rubric really, really well because it's literally asking you to focus mostly on audience effect. What does this actually mean? This doesn't mean that your, your body paragraph should only talk about audience effect. However, you should be building up to it. Just like how in the common module you build up to the why, the why being why is your composer showing this to us? What are they trying to say about the world? What are they trying to open our eyes to or challenge? Um, and that's what you want to build up to in the common module. Here, we want to build up to audience impact. How is this challenging the way you view other cultures, the way you view other identities, the way you view your own culture, the way you view your own identity? Okay, that's what I need from you guys to talk about. Um, okay, integrating this in your responses can be what differentiates between a band five and band six wholeheartedly I can say that okay wholeheartedly my students who have gotten band sixes before in English Standard are the students that do this and do this very well okay so um this is what I was talking about with the kind of buzzword sheet um these are kind of synonyms you can have for the syllabus words so this is straight from the syllabus um it it's asking you how does your text affirm ignore reveal challenge or disrupt prevailing assumptions and beliefs about certain identities and cultures. Um, and that's your audience effect, right? My text affirms this about um, Asian Australian identities and this challenges my own worldview in this way, something like that. Um, so here are some synonyms. I would take a screenshot or I believe you can download these slides um, down below next to the Slido. So maybe you wanna download these slides um, so you don't, so you have a copy of this or you can just screenshot up to you guys. But yeah, here are some words that I would start to implement in your writing to progressively sophisticate it and to match the syllabus, right? You're, you're meeting the demands of the syllabus. Okay. So, um, this is the difference between linking without or linking with audience impact. Just so you guys see the value of talking about audience impact. So instead of something like, Therefore, Lawson reveals the value of community as essential to Australian culture. We want something like, therefore, Lawson reveals the value of community as essential to Australian culture, allowing audiences to understand its continuing presence in the nation today. That's how you grapple with audience effect. Okay. That's an example there of the, yeah, you literally talking about the effect on audiences. Whereas this is just about the composer. We do want you to talk about what the composer was trying to say, but we, again, as I said, we want you to build up towards audience effect. Okay, so notice the difference between these two. Okay, next one. Here, Aunt Serena's characterization, remember how the character changes throughout the text, demonstrates how individuals may struggle to adjust to new lifestyles. Instead of that, we want, hence, Aunt Serena's characterization demonstrates how individuals may struggle to adjust to new lifestyles, enabling audiences to better empathize with their efforts. Okay, um, yeah, you again, you can see the difference, right? This is more band four, band five, 
This is pushing towards band six. Okay. Therefore, her poems represent this historical mistreatment of Aboriginal people that will transition into audiences are encouraged, okay, to empathise with the historical mistreatment of Aboriginal people and strive toward a more culturally harmonious society. So, again, um, you, yeah, you can see integrating audience effect, how it elevates it. So, yeah, we just went through all of that. Um, and what if I told you that the answers you seek are in the syllabus? Um, yeah, the rubric, if you can't tell, is, is where you should be basing a lot of your, stu your study, okay? Because all of this, I literally, um, maybe you didn't realize, but I literally just went through these key ideas in this syllabus, okay? We've literally just went through this together. We have revised the syllabus together. Um, and you can see that that's literally everything you need to do for module A because it's the, the syllabus. You wouldn't believe it. Um, so what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that the rubric, revising the rubric is the number one way to kind of refresh your memory, but also make sure you're on track and you're covering everything you need to cover. Um, it's very rare that you won't talk about the syllabus at all in your practice writing. Like obviously you're going to be talking about the syllabus. It's not rare, however, that students miss out on really key things that they should be including. Okay, so yeah, what am I trying to say? Revise the rubric. We've done it today. So as you continue your study of module A now, um, I would be continuing um, revising the rubric and I would be doing more practice responses as, as um, because the rubric's so fresh in your mind. Okay, it also provides guidelines for the themes and ideas you should use in your responses. Um, and it will help you approach future essay questions. Okay, so um, revising the module A prescribed text. So my criteria is based on two things, okay? How you revise the prescribed text is based on two things. Firstly, look at which parts you enjoy. It's much easier to analyze something if it inspires and interests you. This is something I've spoken about in previous lectures, um, but just to recap, the number one thing that's consistent across all modules that uh, as your marker I'm marking you on is your personal voice, okay? That's something that you hear so much, your personal voice, you hear your teacher say, say you don't have a personal voice or you need to strengthen your personal voice or whatever. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of you are thinking, okay, what the heck is a personal voice though, Chloe Lee? Isn't it just me? Like I'm writing, so isn't it my personal voice? sort of, but not really. Um, personal voice has more to do with having your own unique ideas and having confidence and flair in your writing. So what do I mean? Let's kind of break that down. What do I mean by having your own personal ideas? Um, you have to imagine that as your marker, um, and this isn't just the case for me, this is the case for literally every marker, we're going to be marking a lot of things, a lot of essays. Um, so especially when you do this year after year, you, you start to kind of expect the same sort of things in every essay that you mark, right? Someone studying growing up Asian in Australia. All right. I'm going to kind of, um, be exposed to the same themes and concepts over and over. Someone's doing the castle. All right. Someone's doing Henry Lawson. Okay. It's the same sort of stuff over and over. So your marker understandably gets a little bit bored okay because it's so repetitive and it's so yeah it, it, it it's very rare to um get something that's different but when there is something that's different and i'm sure this isn't the first time you've heard this but yeah when there's something that di that's different it wakes me up i'm suddenly very interested in reading this because oh my gosh it's different to all the other stuff and oh what is this student talking about it oh my gosh that's where your personal voice, that's the genesis of your personal voice. That's where it starts, right? Wake me up. I'm really, as I'm kind of robotically marking, it feels like sometimes, um, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm, I'm really eager to be woken up by a student's writing. Why am I saying all this? Because you will be most confident in the unique ideas that you actually like. When you were reading your text, Think about the, the parts that you actually felt really strongly about and focus on them. 
because odds are when you're writing it, they'll be different to everyone else's. Okay. Um, focus on the parts. And I've always said this, so I'm, I apologize if um, this is something you've heard in a previous lecture of mine, but focus on the parts that maybe in your class discussions, you were disagreeing with everyone else. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they were wrong and you're right or vice versa. It means that you just had a different idea to everyone. Flesh that out. See if you can form an argument or use it as part of an argument. Because that's where, that's what I'm looking for, as I keep saying. That's personal voice. Okay? If you have a really unique argument and you were disagreeing with spark notes and lit charts and your class and your friends, and you said, no, 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 the book is saying this, or the poems are saying this, whatever, um, and you choose to write about that, if you are, if it's something that you're really confident in and really um, interested in, it is likely that the evidence you use will be really different to everyone else, right? Because it's a different idea and it's something that you um, are personally attached to. So you're going to say, all right, these were the scenes that I saw that in and therefore your evidence will be different. When the evidence is different and when it's something that you're deeply interested in, that's where that flair comes from. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for in your personal voice. Again, why am I saying that? It's so much easier to develop a personal voice when you start with what parts you enjoy. Okay, not just what parts of the text, but what kind of discussions did you find that you enjoyed having regarding the text? So when, you're, when your friend said that they saw this particular idea in the castle and you were like, hmm, actually, no, I didn't really see that. Focus on things like that. Okay. Um, as well as that, also connected to the rubric concepts and text theme. Yeah. Um, which, par which parts reflect the rubric concepts and text themes? Uh, this will help you formulate your ideas for essay writing. Okay. Of course, you also need to bring it back and make sure it's connecting to the rubric. Okay. So these are some common mod A themes. Um, yeah, that, that kind of span across all different texts, not just um, kind of like growing up Asian Australia or the castle or Henry Lawson or whatever. There are these kind of span across all of them. Why? Because mostly all of them are focusing on um, some sort of discrimination or cultural difference, right? Because it's identity and culture that you're looking at nonetheless. So things like assimilation. Bilingualism, multilingualism, belonging, displacement, class, discrimination, empower and disempowerment, family, gender, heritage, inequality, marginalization, multiculturalism, norms, ownership, power and authority, prejudice, race, stereotype, status and spirituality. Those are all themes that you can look at. Um, and if you're someone that's struggling and you're, you've studied your text and you don't know what the heck to talk about in your essays, start here okay look at how your text talks about assimilation or classes or heritage inequality whatever um and maybe you might not end up talking about these exact themes but it's a starting point okay so constructing notes i am going to like really 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 urge you guys to have your notes finished as soon as you can if they're not already Okay, you do not take it from me as someone who's been in your position. You do not want to have to construct your notes before trials. And oh my gosh, I forgot to do my notes for module A. Let me start making them now. And oh, this is what I'm going to use. No, please. If there's something at all you take from today's lecture, let it be that you need to have your notes done as soon as possible. Because this isn't really active studying constructing notes. This is something you do in term while you're still studying it. So um, if you're someone that doesn't do it, while you start studying module B, if module B is the one that you're doing next, I know some schools flip around the modules, whatever you're studying next, construct your notes as you go along. And as you finish the term, make sure your notes are done. So you do not have to come back to them. Okay. Because yeah, it's passive. This is pa passive studying. There's, there's really no benefit of constructing notes besides it's something to kind of assimilate all your ideas together and use to start doing practice writing, okay? This isn't like any sort of application-based learning. I'm not saying notes aren't valuable. Of course, notes are really, really, really valuable, but um, we wanna transition from constructing notes into practice writing. So 
moral of the story, get them done. This is a kind of sample way of constructing your notes. I love notes tables. I find that they're just so much easier and they just, um, they mimic the way you write your body paragraph because you begin introducing your theme or idea. Then you start talking about your quotes and then you start analyzing the quotes and then you build up to your audience impact. So as you're kind of memorizing all this stuff in lead up for trials and HSC, as you're remembering it in trials in the HSC, that's how you're writing it. So you're kind of going, okay, the theme was empowerment. My quote was this, this was my analysis. Oh, and this is what I built up to. Do you have to write it like this? No. Um, I've had plenty of students that got a band six in English standard and didn't use notes like this at all, but I have had students that did use it like this. So I used it like this as well. And I liked it like this. Um, just find whatever works for you. There is no kind of one size fits all with constructing notes. Um, ultimately the bigger picture idea here is that you need to kind of be finished your notes. Um, yeah, as I said, so could be just your quotes. Some people just have their quotes as their notes and they know what their analysis is. They don't need to write it down. Some people like to have bullet points with quotes and analysis. Some people like to have whole paragraphs. I wouldn't recommend that because you don't want to look at an idea through one paragraph only. What do I mean by that? You, your idea about gender, let's say you're writing a body paragraph on gender, that should look different depending on the question that you're writing. Okay, your one body paragraph for gender shouldn't be the same across many different questions. So it's a little bit limiting if you write it as a body paragraph and just keep going over the body paragraph and kind of memorizing that one body paragraph. Um, because yeah, you're literally just kind of training yourself to only look at it through one way and not really like develop it for the question and the specifics of the question. Um, yeah, so I would advise against that, but I know it does work for some people. Um, ultimately, if you want my advice, this is my advice to use this. Structure it around themes. Also structure it around characters. Okay, so for every module that I did, I would have one like this. And then I'd also have one on characters and quotes relating to the character analysis or into impact. Why? Because you can be asked to do a character analysis, which is basically an essay that's not focusing on themes, it's focusing on characters. So um, especially for common module or module A, you could be asked to do a character analysis because there's that focus on individual experiences or individual identities. So if you were asked to look at how different individual identities in your module A prescribed text comment on, I don't know, Let's pick something, family, randomly. Okay, just pick that one. Um, you would have to kind of, yeah, look at different characters and look at the themes and ideas that they represent at large and kind of comment on that. Okay, um, yeah, so do it around themes and characters. Your key scenes should be in your quotes and analysis and syllabus dot points, okay, especially for the common mod and for module A, if you, um, if you're kind of wondering where you could put that, you could make another column here and yeah, put in link to syllabus and then link each idea to parts of the syllabus. Okay. Yeah. So this is what I was talking about. This is what, um, this is a sample of a student's notes, um, from last year. And this is, yeah, works for some people to have it like this for, um, this poem, um, a T.S. Eliot poem, proof rock, this is my kind of idea for preludes. This is my idea. Um, some people um, do it like this. Now, I wouldn't have my notes like this, but as I keep saying practice writing, this is something that I would do as well as writing out full body paragraphs and full essays, essay plans, essay plans, essay plans, essay plans. I cannot kind of tell you guys enough to always do essay plans. What is an essay plan? This, you give yourself a question, and you plan out your essay. So this like, yeah, this is what I would do down to almost everything, down to a T almost. Um, so you say, all right, this is my question. This would be my thesis that's responding to the question. My body paragraph one would be this, which relates to my thesis and the question. Body paragraph two would be on this, which relates to my thesis and the question. And then same thing for body paragraph three. And then for each argument, this kind of dot point where your argument would be for each body paragraph, the only thing I would add is evidence. 
Okay, body paragraph one was on Prospero. This is all my evidence for Prospero. Body paragraph two is on Gonzalo. These are all my pieces of evidence for Gonzalo. And so on and so forth for your other body paragraphs, okay? Um, yeah, this is something I would do in your free time as well. To kind of give yourself a break from practice writing um so you don't burn out and you're not kind of like oh i do not want to do any more practice writing this is a fun way to kind of interrupt that rigid study structure um this also really builds the skill of developing your ideas to the specifics of the question okay um this obviously isn't so much about timing because you're not writing out a full essay. This isn't so much about structure. This isn't so much about what you're actually writing about in each body paragraph. This is more testing. Can you, let's say, all right, I knew I was going to write a body paragraph about the character Prospero, right? Who's a character from The Tempest, but don't worry about the play. Just know I was going to write about Prospero. I knew that in my head. Okay. I had that in my head. And then I see the question. This is testing. All right, I knew everything I wanted to say about Prospero. How do I develop that to the question? How do I twist it so it's answering the question? Um, one of the biggest mistakes you can make in the HSC overall, not just the exam, but the HSC year, is thinking that you need to have a new argument or you need to have an argument for each question. In the HSC, the question is going to be difficult. Okay, I can almost guarantee you that. Um, It'll be very fortunate if like, you feel that you can smash it out and you know exactly what to write and everything like that. It's very fortunate. But odds are that, yeah, the question is going to be really hard. So it's not so much, oh my gosh, I don't have an argument for this question. It's more so what are my arguments that I have and how can I bend it to answer this question? So that's what this um, tests. I would very much recommend doing essay plans all throughout the year and start doing them now. Okay, um, prior to the HSC, I transformed these into paragraphs. Yep, for each um, essay plan, I would actually answer it. So um, there you can see. And then wrote full practice essays for the question that I'd wrote, written the essay plans for. Okay, so yeah, essay plan. Um, and I would suggest to do an essay plan before you do any practice writing, but you can just do it as its own separate activity too. Um, in the HSC, I actually made not as in-depth as this, but I made little essay plans before I would begin writing just so I could plan it out. Something that I did not to jump the gun here and talk about study tips already or kind of like tips moving forward, but something that I did do in the HSC is I went through and I planned all my responses before I actually even begun writing. And I wrote down all my evidence for each essay before I begun any of them. Why? So while I'm doing module A, I'm not thinking, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, am I going to forget my quotes from module B? Oh my gosh. And while I'm doing module B, it's not, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting stuff for module C. I, I just know I have the confidence. All right, I've, I've wrote everything down. I know what I have to do. I just have to go through and do it. Okay. So, um, yeah, this is examples of how essay plans form into um, whole essays. All right, other ways to construct notes, um, flashcards for key terms and definitions. Um, this isn't as important for English standard or English in general. This is more so something you would typically do for like biology or legal studies or really like you could do it, I guess, for any subjects. English, it's harder to make flashcards, but I would use it to revise the rubric, okay? We've just spoken about how important it is to know your rubric and know the rubric confidently. Um, so yeah, I would suggest to make them maybe for the rubric and certainly those buzzwords. Um, Quizlet is a fantastic platform for making digital ones, okay? Or Anki, um, A-N-K-I. Um, an A4 summary sheet for scenes, characters, and themes. I would suggest to make a summary sheet for themes. Something that I did in the lead up for um, the trials, and I'm not saying like a week before or two weeks before, three weeks before, I mean in the months leading up, is I would I would do it, especially in my um, free periods or uh, study periods, whatever. Um, I would write down my theme. So let's say I had a book that I was studying and I was studying the theme of friendship, right? I would say, all right, I'm gonna set a timer for five minutes. I'm gonna write down friendship. I'm going to write down my argument for friendship and all my pieces of evidence for friendship and the analysis for each. Why would I do that? So I can start memorizing all my evidence. 
okay? And it gets stronger and stronger. Because in your practice writing, another thing that you want to do, and there is a lot to do, but another thing you want to do is make sure that you have... You're like you're able to do it independent of your notes. You don't have to always rely on your notes because um, you, you can do practice writing, you can get feedback, you can do it under time conditions, that's great. But another thing, another element is you don't want to be relying on your notes because then it kind of throws, it's all thrown out the window when you get into an exam and you don't have your notes. Um, so that's one technique, I would say. Um, another thing you can do is mind maps for illustrating essay structures. Um, and yeah, this would particularly be the case if you're a visual learner. All right.